Ladies and gentlemen, we'll call this regular board meeting to order. We'd like to start with everyone please standing. Uh, ROTC is not here, so we'll just go ahead and do the pledge. Mr. Desarmo, could you lead us in the pledge? Thank you. 1.3 is opening comments from our superintendent. Thank you, Mr. President. Um, first of all, I'd like to inform our board and our parents out there that uh, we are working on some criteria for allowing students back into the immersion program. Those that have left, we are going to be putting criteria back together and we're going to be bringing this back to you. So uh, please spread the word in reference to that. Secondly, I'd like to, first of all, I'm so happy to see all of our parents our students, our teachers, our administrators. We have assistant principals, we have principals here that we are right around the corner as far as leap testing. And I cannot tell you the hard work that we have seen going through the different classrooms. I want to first of all thank our teachers, our teachers that are doing the hard work every single day. Also to our students, those of you who are doing the work and you're gonna show the rest of the state exactly how smart you are this next couple of weeks. And lastly, I want to first of all thank our principals, our APs that are in this room that lead the charge every single day. It's without you that this could not be possible. So thank you so much on behalf of the entire school board. Last thing that I'd like to do is I'd like to acknowledge that there are several different things happening as far as projects and construction, so on and so forth through the parish. I have to publicly state that I have not seen a department move so quickly as far as looking at the needs of our principals, answering those needs, getting jobs done, making sure that the things as far as schools are taking place. And we just want to kind of show the board and the rest of the community some of these highlights that represent all nine school districts. Dr. Robley? Thank you, Mr. Touchet. Um, I'm proud to represent the department that's going to come to you guys and board just a um, huge shout out to y'all to allow us to kind of reorganize some of the departments and reset some of our practices to run things more efficiently. Um, we're, we're, we're super excited to show y'all some of the projects that have come in uh, on time and under budget, um, but that also just are a good representation of our district that we hope to do this more often with you guys so y'all can see the good things that are happening around uh, Lafayette Parish. Um, in the end, y'all, it's all about making environments that our, our kids truly deserve and making school improvements that our, our parents and communities can really be proud of. So without further ado, I'm going to bring up Mr. Robert Gotro, the Director of Planning, Facilities, and Maintenance. Said, we made some changes in the processes and the way we do things in the construction department. Uh, I've got to give a big thanks to the superintendent for trusting, bringing me in and my team. Uh, we were only teachers for 20 and 30 years. My team, my top three, consists of teachers. We have 70 years of teaching experience between the three of us. So I think our focus changed where we want to make sure things we do directly impact the kids. So we want to show you some things that are making it better. We have multiple schools where we've done some of these projects with asphalt driveways, car rider lines. Uh, Charles Burke is one of them. We've come in and had double car rider lines to get the cars out of the public roads and onto our property while people wait to get their pickup students in the afternoon. So Charles Burke is one of those. Uh, I want to go ahead to the next one. Evangeline Elementary, we've done a couple of big projects there. Uh, we actually did a pavilion like this at Evangeline, and we did another one at Woodville that just wrapped up in the last couple of weeks. I think these two, over the last four or five years, made number 20 of the projects of this caliber that were done on the elementary uh, and middle school campuses. So when we have more of these coming up. 
uh, Milton Elementary and Middle School. We took an area in the back of the school that uh, was just a grass area, made it into an overflow for a parent pickup, car rider there also. And again, with safety in mind, to get parents, grandparents that are picking up students, get you out of the road, get you off of those public roads and get you onto our property where you can wait. So these are projects that just wrapped up in the last two weeks. Uh, El Leo Judice, um playground equipment. We're adding playground equipment at quite a few of the elementary and middle schools. Uh, playground equipment, doing nice extravagant pieces with uh, Board of Health approved bases with um, mulch at the bottom and borders. Board of Health comes in every month or so and inspects to make sure that we're up to date on our safety on these and we have quite a few of these going on in the district. Uh, Live Oak Elementary, this one came out great, the uh, painting of the inside of the school. Um, we did this over the Easter break, uh, came in, this was the first time the interior of this school had been touched since the school was built. Uh, it was still wallpaper before we came in, we painted it, we're actually going to come in, uh, we're asking for another little bit of money tonight to come in and do some more in this school and finish it out and do some more painting. So uh, Live Oak was done that way. Marshall Beale, another one with playground equipment, and you'll see the, the setup with the safety area there. Uh, when we were kids, playgrounds didn't look like that. We fell, we got hurt, we, 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 we did other things. Kids today get a difference, so they don't get hurt. And again, Board of Health comes in, checks us, and we're good to go with them. Uh, Austin Elementary, another paint job. So we're painting at quite a few schools right now. Uh, we've got some major paint jobs going at these and others coming up. Um, Paint makes a total world of difference. We're about to start doing another initiative with pressure washing where we're going to go through rounds of constant pressure washing at school to make our facilities look nice and new and up to date. So Austin Elementary. West Side had a big project. The West Side teachers uh, weren't even having much place to park when they got to work in the mornings. So they were having to park in the grass and kind of in the front yard. So we added in some parking uh, there. We also repaved the bus loop in the front and set it up where when the kids get off of the bus, they're right at that canopy. They don't have to walk in the rain at all. Uh, in the past, the way the loop was set, they were kind of having to offset. Kids would get wet and they were walking in some low areas. So we uh, updated that area for the teachers and students to have a nice clean area to get out and walk. Woodvale, uh, another pavilion project. Uh, Woodvale, uh, also uh, the playground equipment isn't that old either, so you can kind of see all of it in one right there. Uh, this one just finished up this week. Uh, another big project there. That one took us a little while to get figured in and get it right, but we got it taken care of. Uh, Edgar Martin is getting quite a bit of updates also, a lot of painting going on there. Uh, those schools probably had never seen fresh paint, it's been a while. Uh, we're not finished there, we're still doing more. Uh, it's amazing what paint can do to a facility to make it look nice and look upgraded. And right now I think I have about eight more schools that we're gonna be doing this same kind of work on some of the schools that need updates. So Edgar Martin got some good painting taken care of. Uh, Scott Middle fencing and tree removal. So those of you that are familiar with Scott Middle, when you pass on this street, it used to have all these tall pine trees there. Uh, we went in this week and removed all the pine trees from the front. Uh, safety issue uh, coming up, those trees get tall, they eventually fall, it causes other problems down the road. So cleaned it up. You'll see the fencing. We've done fencing at quite a few facilities over the year. Uh, single point entry, safety, making it where nobody can get in and out of those campuses. And we've removed a lot of the fencing along the very exterior of the property on the roads, so it's more appealing to the eye. F facilities look better when the fences are closer to the buildings. Uh, Katiana High School, uh, and the Katiana High Zone I picked to show this, so those walkway canopies you see, I need to go and measure how many feet or miles of that stuff we put up in the last four or five months. Uh, our priority and the superintendent's priority when I came in, one of the first things he said is no kid should ever be walking in the rain when they're at school. So we took that seriously. We put up probably a few miles of this stuff. So this is at Acadiana High School. Uh, teachers and students were emailing us saying, hey, we get wet when we go there. We pulled it to the top, got walkway covers and canopies put in, and uh, they're taken care of. So we're doing that quite a few places today. Uh, Karen Crow High School, another painting job. Karen Crow, um, 
a lot of paint done. Uh, it's on here. You can kind of see the underside of the, uh, the area there. And then in the center, that's a new cooler. We've done a few of those with Ms. Renee with Ms. Sherville. We've got uh, five or six schools that we added in new walk-in coolers and refrigeration systems for the cafeterias to have newer areas for food. Uh, some walkway canopies on the picture on the left all the way in the back. Again, kids walking outside, uh, put them under some good covered area. Uh, more Karen Crow High School. Uh, that's the side of the school where the uh, kids uh, get dropped off on the bus, all freshly painted, pressure washed and painted, uh, painted there. Uh, we have more projects coming at Karen Crow High School also. Northside High School, uh, the turf fields, we've got I think six turf field projects either ongoing or between what's ongoing and coming up. Northside was the first one to get tackled. It started in November, and they're just about wrapped up. They've got a little bit left to do on the uh, lettering and the numbers, but it's getting close. Looks great. I have some other pictures from drones flying over. It looks awesome. Uh, by next year, this time, we'll have at least four of those completed and a couple more on the list. So Northside looking great on the football facility. Uh, Como High School. I think... Uh, out of everything we have, the next group you see is going to be the best. So right here, repaved the parking lot. Uh, the wooden fence on the right, if any of you passed around Como, that fence was kind of dilapidated, falling down, went in, put a new fence, put some walkway covers. That's where students on the buses get dropped off. As soon as they get off the bus, they're under a covered walkway into school. Uh, the next Como High School picture, uh, I taught there for 15 years. Como High School didn't look anything like that. I think that's one that we're probably the most proud of. If any of y'all know what Como High looked like, uh, it got a really good facelift. Looks great. Uh, Ms. Padgett Guidry helped us a lot on color selections, and uh, that school really pops now. It gives it a pretty good look. So this is just a little bit, a snippet. Since I've come in in the last four months, we've closed out about 70 projects. This is just a snippet of what we have, and uh, the board and superintendent and LPSS leadership are really giving us uh, a lot to work with, so we're making some progress. So just uh, really appreciative to be here and to help this get along. Thank you all. Mr. President, that concludes my comments. Thank you. Superintendent, Mr. Gotro, good job. We'll move to the information items. Uh, I'll mention the first one, and then we'll, uh, we'll, we'll jump to 2.5. The first one is 2.1. It's, it's the board meeting change. Uh, update for June, July, and August. That was Ms. Gordon. I'll just read it. The June meeting has been changed to the 12th, the July meeting to the 31st, and the August meeting to the 21st of August. So that that's changes to our meeting calendar. They, they stay on Wednesdays. We're going to jump to 2.5, Academics, the Recognition of Black History Poster Winners. Ms. LaFleur. Thank you, Mr. Lachile. During Black History Month, our schools celebrated the contributions and history of African Americans. Schools held events and programs that honored their struggles and their victories. Many schools also participated in the LPSS art contest. Elementary school students created posters that encompassed the theme Black History Month, a time to learn and remember. Middle and high schools created original artwork following the theme, key figures, movements, and milestones in black history. Tonight, we honor the students who won first place at their individual schools. Students, when I call your names, if you would please come up. Board members, if y'all'd like to join us, we can take some pictures. Um, from our elementary school, our first group that we will honor, Jalissa Moss from Ernest Gallet, Jordan Page from Woodvale Elementary, Isaac Rivers from Dusan Elementary, Geraldo Arcides Jr. from Prairie Elementary, and Elizabeth Arsenault from Charles Burke Elementary. And while they take this first group of pictures, if you notice, we do have a slideshow of all of their presentations that will be played out front and will remain out front in our lobby. Perfect. Boys and girls, if y'all have a seat, board members, please stay. Our next group of winners, Riley Taylor from Karen Crow Bob Lilly. Shayla Garner from Katherine Drexel, Shaylee K. 
Camden Tebow from Milton Elementary, Sophia Rangel from Green Tea Linden. Thank you. One more group. And our last group is Midland High School winners. India Melanson from Milton Middle School. Alan Sanchez from Karen Crow Middle School. Louis Perron from LJ Alamo. And Rudra Carter-Kelker from Lafayette High School. Hold on one second. Hold on one second. We have Aria Bonner who's going to join this group. Let's take one more picture. Aria Bonner is from Judy's Middle. Congratulations, we are very proud of these students. And thank you to Ms. Morrow and our social studies department. They did a fantastic job with this. Very impressive students. Congratulations. Good job. Uh, we've got one we need to add on an information item uh, that's easily done. Uh, Ms. Mason would like to recognize the student of the year from Thank Lafayette High. Every year schools choose the student of the year for elementary, middle, and high schools. These students go on to compete at the parish level and possibly even at the state level. This year's High School Student of the Year recipient also achieved Student of the Year at his elementary school as well as the LPSS Middle School Student of the Year. Lafayette High School senior Ali Habib has recently been named as a finalist for the High School State Students of the Year Award. Ali is a student in the LHS gifted program and was a member of the French Immersion Program where he is a candidate for the Seal of Biliteracy. He is one of 25 recipients out of thousands that applied for the Stamps Scholarship at LSU, where he will be majoring in computer engineering. In addition to his academic accomplishments, Ali is a valued member of the LHS soccer and swim teams. He holds po officer positions in the Beta Club and Student Council. He also volunteers in our community at St. Joseph Steiner and the Muslim Education Center of Acadiana. After winning both the district and regional student of the year competitions, Ali moved on to become one of the top eight high school seniors in the state. This esteemed accomplishment also comes with the potential to be recognized as Louisiana's high school student of the year. Ali's dedication to his education and extracurricular activities exemplifies the excellence we strive to cultivate at Lafayette High. Ali, do you wanna come up here? <laughs>
Congratulations, young man. We just want all you students to know this is the fun part about serving on the board, uh, participating in, in your accomplishments, your hard work, and allowing us to be a part of it. That's the, that's the fun part. We'll go back to our information items. 2.2 will not happen tonight. The ROTC couldn't be here. 2.3, Masters Guild Association presentation by Mr. Kerry Duet. Uh, Mr. Edmund? Yes, uh, Superintendent, board members, and community, Ms. Kerry Duet with Masters Guild has an awesome program for juniors and senior kids in school levels, and I would like for her to come up now so she can explain it to the board and everybody's in attendance. You can start, ma'am. Hi, I'm Carrie Dewey, and I'm with the Master's Guild. Um, one of our core values at Master's Guild is that time is valuable. So today I'm going to be very brief. But please know that I could talk to you all day long about the need for work-ready skills in secondary education. I've been in construction since I'm 19 years old, so I've been able to firsthand watch the gap grow. Um, and I'm hoping today to tell you a little about who we are, what we're doing, and um, hopefully start an ongoing discussion about readying graduates for the workforce between educators and the skilled trades. Um, I've passed out some packets to you guys today. I'm hoping that these are going to, speaking of covering gaps, I'm hoping these are going to cover some of the gaps today about uh, what information I might not be able to cover about who we are and what we do. Um, Quick stat, if you didn't already know that we need extra workers in the skilled trade, the new numbers came out, and we're going to need 501,000 extra tradespeople on top of the usual hiring pace in 2024 to keep up with the demand. Um, we're probably not going to close that gap right here in Lafayette, but we sure like to start. Masters Guild Association, we're a nonprofit. Um, we're a relatively new nonprofit, and we're here to champion careers in building. Uh, we believe that many hands make light work. And so to do that, we merge the efforts of employers, educators, and professional organizations to rapidly deploy training. Um, that gap, like I mentioned, has been rapidly growing over the years. So right now, in the last three years, our focus has been to attack work-ready programs. And now, as of last year, pre apprenticeship pre-apprenticeship certificate training, which from here on we will call PACT because that is a mouthful. Um, the Guild has launched two training programs so far. Intro to Construction is a work-ready training. We have run it 14 times. Uh, just in the last year, we have trained uh, 45 people through Intro to Construction. Uh, of those 45, 24 were actually high school students, so that was very promising. And um, the HBI, the Home Builders Institute Pre-Apprenticeship Certificate Training Pact, is relatively new for us. We ran it last year for the first time. We feel very, very good about that curriculum. Um, you're probably wondering how we're doing it, and I'm going to take you back to that many hands make light work. So the Guild Association, the training entity, is co-sponsored right now primarily by the Home Builders Association, the Acadian Home Builders Association, and Masters Guild of Acadiana Works, which was our original company that is a co-employment company. Um, we're trying to revolutionize the way the trades hire by co-hiring and cross-training. Those of us that have been very successful in construction, we believe that we were successful because we had the opportunity to be exposed to multiple trades. By being exposed to multiple trades, we were able to figure out not what we wanted to do, because very few of us do the thing that we painted that we wanted to do, but 
what were we naturally good at, what did our natural talents lend to, um, and what did our, what, um, what, what piqued our interest? Because having passion about something, when you're going to work in anything that's hands-on and very in the physical world, is super important. Um, we don't get to coast any day that we come to work. Um, so again, we're sponsored by the HBA and MGA Works. We're looking for more sponsors, so please feel free to pass these around. Um, and in the MGA Works program, over the last four years that we've been running it, we've amassed uh, 14 small business employers who co-hire and cross-train through that program. Um, in the last 12 months only, they have uh, onboarded 29 recruits um, on different levels. Not all have retained, but that's okay. Our, we, we do have a goal to retain, but our main goal is to produce quality entry-level workers into the construction field that can go and work under someone and learn a trade. Um, in the last 12 months, we've come a, a long way with our training, and the, the main thing that I was hoping to come to you today is, one, to thank you for supporting carpentry and trades classes within the high schools. It's very important. Um, the Career Center, W.D. and Mary Baker Smith Career Center has been fantastic. I can't say enough things about Dr. Boffey. Um, she's super connected to what employers are actually looking for. We found when we started uh, associating with them that our values were very similar. Like the values that our employers came up and the school values were very, very similar. Um, so we definitely want to see more of that and we thank you for bringing programs like that. And we're new to collaborating on education. So we're here to learn uh, what's the best way to integrate what we're doing and what's happening in the school systems. And the number one thing is to change the narrative on post-graduation work plans. Um, I'm a little biased, okay? I've been in construction since I'm 19 years old. The industry has treated me very well. Some of my peers consider me successful. Um, I do too, like 55% of the time. Um, but construction should be a cho first choice career. For a lot of people that um, have natural abilities, they don't ever get the opportunity to find out if that should have been their first choice until something doesn't go right, until something doesn't work out. And so we become a second option or the worst thing is the last resort. And I think if you go through the trades and you talk to people, you find out that they find our work very fulfilling. Um, it can be extremely lucrative. Most of my tradespeople definitely make more than educators for sure. And um, yeah, you can see, in the, you can drive down job sites and you can see, uh, you know, nice vehicles and most of them live in nice homes. So this shouldn't be a last resort option and it shouldn't be a second choice path. It should be something that's fostered within the secondary education uh, system. And uh, we should work together more to find out how we can, we can find those people. Thank you. Um, I didn't see an age range on here. I know you mentioned some of them are students. Is there a minimum age for application so or recommendation, just, referral? Just as of January 1st, we started taking them starting at 16. But at 16, they absolutely have to go through the MGA Works program because we worked on that to make sure that we were uh, compliant and that we understood how the work permits worked and that kind of thing. So we're encouraging our employers that they can only basically hire those under 18 through that. Um, right now we're running two and two. Half of our programs were running geared towards high schoolers and half of them were running geared towards uh, adults and we're still kind of comparing some of the outcomes. Great, thank you very much. Sure. Mr. Lejeune. Do y'all train them before you hire them, or you get them hired and then they get trained? So the, that's why there's two trainings. One of them is a work ready. It's a 10 hour. We've been doing it in four weeks. Um, we break it up quite a bit because uh, we find that absorption is, is super important for us. Um, so it's two and a half hours per class for four weeks on Tuesdays. 
During that work ready training, during that four week period, the employers are recruiting from that group. Only if they get hired on um, are they eligible to go into the HBI training, which is a lot more um, extensive and expensive. I almost said expensive and I meant extensive, but both are true. And where do y'all do the training at? Many hands make light work. We do it everywhere. Um, we have, uh, you know, as you can imagine in our group, we have quite a bit of real estate and stores and warehouses and shops. Um, and occasionally, like um, last fall, the Home for the Holidays, if you're familiar, it's a house that we built with the HBA. We actually brought the HBI training there for four weeks while it was finishing up. We used the recruits to punch out the house. Thank you. Okay, we'll go down to the final information item. Uh, Karen Crow Middle, JAG class, first place in business planning, Mr. Desarmo. Uh, I'd like to call up Mr. Peter Trent with the JAG program. This was an item that was actually gonna be last <coughs> month, but our agenda was pretty stacked. So it's a couple months or a month and a half past but please uh, give us an idea of how everything went and how you got to this point. All right. All right, so um, <clears throat> for those who don't really understand what JAG stands for, it stands for Jobs for America's Graduates. And what I do in my program is I teach life skills, social skills, and financial literacy. So we won first place at a student development conference. And the point of the project was business planning. I had four students develop a business planning project based off of all the materials, all the attributes they gained during the whole program. Like they learned a lot, I teach a lot, utilizing teaching methods from my own experience and using the curriculum, of course. But, and uh, this young man walking up right here, he won first place in the employability skills training. Uh, he was the only one that competed and what he had to do was build a cover letter, build a resume, even though he did one of the two he still was the only one that competed and he was selected anonymously. So he will also be attending the national conference. Um, so in the national conference, you have to create that project before a panel of judges, similar to me talking in front of you right now. Um, and they have to present it in a PowerPoint. And one thing that stands out in the business planning project is that Karen Crow Middle has exceeded in the JAG program prior to last year's performance. And I'm more than honored to actually see them succeed at this age to be able to experience a, such a trip. Uh, the national conference will be held in St. Louis, Missouri uh, during next week. It is during LEAP, so I know they're more excited than attending, but thanks to uh, Ms. Elihusio, uh, we were able to get that. A lot of strings were pulled, and I, I appreciate those who supported those strings. But um, besides that, I, I'm more than honored that uh, we were able to be squeezed on the agenda so I could present to you all the great things we've been doing in uh, this JAG program. Mr. Dalgo. Well, thank you guys uh, for being here. I was fortunate enough to be asked back in November uh, to be a, one of many panelists uh, when you guys came to Southside as a group and it was such an honor to speak to the students from across the district um, and answer their questions it wasn't about me speaking it was about them asking questions about whatever life work politics um, and I admire the program so thank you for the hard work Mr. Edmund I just want to tell Mr. Trent that we appreciate all you do uh, I had the honor of going to meet you doing Black History Month for the Black Wall Street presentation you did at Karen Middle Gym and it was an awesome experience. I was able to connect with a few kids that still connect with me now. So just, I want to just tell you thank you publicly for what you've been doing to the kids. And I'd like to hear a uh, little, little guy right here. Though. Go ahead, can you give us a little bit of an idea of, of why you do this and what, what makes you kind of want to do this program and, and what do you feel about the future of it? I do the program because it teaches me like things that I'll need in the future, like getting a job and um, how to work. And the other question was what I've seen in the future. Um, I feel like in the future, 
I feel like JAG is going to be a really successful thing because of the things that it teaches kids to grow up to be. Thank you. Congratulate. Congratulations, Congratulations to both of you. Good luck. <laughs> Wait, can, can we take a picture? Sorry. Take a picture? Yes. Board members? All right, ladies and gentlemen, we're going to start with our consent agenda. On our consent agenda, I read the items. Board members will pull those that they, don't, they want pulled and discuss further. Items can be voted in in Globo. You still can reply to those, speak your comments. Our comments here by Robert's Rules are for or against the item. It is not question or answer. You have three minutes. And the amount of speakers and time is at the discretion of the president. If we're discussing an item, and there are many of you that want to speak on the same item, if you can pick one or two spokesmen, it goes a little bit better. That's just a request. We go by Robert's rules, and we have our own policies. I will start with 3.1, academics. That is discussion and our action concerning resolution 04-024-2089, National Autism Awareness Month. Pull that one, please. And I will remind my fellow board members, you do not have to pull a resolution to talk about it or read it. We can, we can do it in Globo. 3.2, discussion and our action concerning resolution 04-024-2090, week of the young child on April 6th to 12, 6 through the 12th, 2024. 3.3, discussion and our action concerning resolution 04-024-2091, Education Savings Account. 3.4, Discussion and Action Concerning Summer Operating Hours and Work Schedule. 3.5, Discussion and Action Concerning the Dress Code Guidelines for Students, portion of the 2024-2025 Student Parent Handbook. 3.6, Discussion and Action Concerning Revisions to Appendix A, Schedule of Fees for Policy JS, Student fees, fines, and charges for the 2024-2025 school year. 3.7, discussion or action concerning committed school sites, additions, renovations, and replacements. 3.8, discussion or action concerning changes to the account one and account two, job description as attached. 3.9, discussion and or action concerning adjusting the capital improvement funds budget to purchase a truck for the supervisor of construction and maintenance. 310, discussion and action to fund Karen Crow High Building 7 roof project within the self-funded construction fund. 3.11, discussion and action concerning project description within the capital improvement fund. 3.12, discussion and action concerning a budget revision to capital improvement fund to add a new project. 3.13, discussion and action to use contingency and are committed for roofing project funds for improvements to facilities. I'd like to pull that one. Mr. Lejeune? Okay. Three point one four discussion and action concerning the addition of fusion architects to the list of approved firms to be used by Department of Construction. 3.15, discussion or action concerning the declaration of surplus property at Broussard Middle, Como High School, Middlebrook Elementary, and Paul Brough School. 
3.16, discussion and our action concerning the 2023 annual comprehensive, comprehensive financial report. 3.17, discussion and our action concerning the April budget to actual revisions for fiscal year 23-24. 3.18, discussion and our action regarding the Hub International Group Health Insurance Consultant Service Agreement. 3.19, discussion and our action regarding Group Health Insurance Consultant Services. 3.20, discussion and our action concerning con Concerning revisions to policy JBCC, student assignment, policy DGA, authorized signatures, and policy JCDAE, student use of electronic telecommunication devices. 3.21, discussion and our action concerning the minutes of the March 5th, 13th, and 25th, 2024, 2025, 2024. And in 3.22 is approval of all action items. I will entertain a motion to approve all items not pulled. Okay. I would Second. like to make a read 3.3 before we have vote. <coughs> yeah, well, I didn't have to pull it. Just, I just wanted to read it. You don't, you don't have to pull yeah. it, but no, when we get to Maybe there, the I'll, when, I'll get, yeah, you're fine. So. Mr. Dalgo made the motion. Who was the second? Second, Hannah Mason. Hannah. We have a motion on the floor that we approve all items not pulled. We will now move to public comment. If you would like to talk for or against an item, please let us know which one it is and speak on it. You'll have three minutes, sir. Uh, good evening, Nick Richard, Lafayette. Hi, I am uh, against 3.5, only because I have some edits that I think are important. This is the dress code. Uh, page two, uh, identification. School ideas must be visible, that's great. After that sentence, I would like to add, photo may not be covered or defaced to prevent identification. We have a number of students who will put stickers or they'll draw on the picture or whatever. Kind of defeats the purpose of an ID. All right, I've still got two and a half minutes. Uh, page four, under headwear, jewelry, body decorations, uh, not allowed, no sunglasses inside. First question, what about transition lenses? Some of my students have those. Uh, but also there is a no, there is no, no sunglasses inside prohibition for middle school and high school. I don't know if that was an omission or we're gonna allow the kids to walk down the hall with uh, sunglasses. Uh, page five, um, under shoes, tight socks, third column, under allowed, um, earrings, tongue, nose, and other piercings. I'm just wondering why we distinguished uh, the tongue and nose from other piercings. That was just kind of a question in my head. Um, page six, um, under the second category of sweater and sweatshirt, I would encourage you to include pullover jackets. That is a significant um, piece of outerwear that a lot of students wear and I'd like it to be clarified for teachers to better enforce the dress code. Um, but my big one is um, why do we distinguish between pullover and full zip outerwear? Um, I'm from the 90s. We had very brightly colored full zip jackets. I mean they were atrocious by today's standards but they're coming back I hear. Um, why is that any different from, you know, uh, what, I'll, what only comes to mind is a Bill Cosby sweatshirt, um, in that the multicolored aspect of it, why is pullover not okay, but a fully unzipped is okay? And with my last minute, uh, even if you won't approve that, I'll ask you to please approve university sweatshirts. We have high school juniors and seniors who commit to a university or they receive scholarship to a university and they cannot wear a raging Cajun sweatshirt, even though they're going there because it's not a Lafayette high color. Thank you all for your time and I hope you consider these edits. I wouldn't get up just yet. What? Yes, sir. I will not get up just yet. Thank you, sir. No, it's, it's public comment right now. I was just leaning over to Acknowledge Ms. Reed. You're good, sir. Thank you. Ms. Reed. Thank you, sir. Um, 
Julia Reed, President Lafayette Parish Association of Educators. Um, I just wanted to extend our thanks to the board for 3.3 in opposition of ESAs. Many of you, we asked you when you were running if you would feel comfortable getting involved in Baton Rouge because they create a lot of our problems. And we want to say thank you for that follow through on your um, campaign promises that you made to educators to help us in the fight in Baton Rouge. Um, ESAs stand to destroy public education in Louisiana and destroy the lives of public educators and public school students. And so I just wanted to extend thanks because we don't always get to say thank you and, and a lot of times we end up on the opposite sides of issues. But I want to acknowledge something great whenever something great happens. And we really appreciate you standing with us to support our students and our fellow educators. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Reed. Any other public comment on any items not pulled? Ms. Montz? Um, I have a question. I know it's not a question, but I will place it that way. I don't expect an answer. I have concerns about 3.19. I think she turned the mic off. That's about as technologically as student as I get. It's blinking. I'm going to switch it out for you. I broke the mic. It's okay. Thank you. Um, item 3.9. My first concern is that the Board Insurance Committee passed a motion to be sent to the Board. That is not what appears on your agenda tonight. The motion that the Board Insurance Committee passed um, had added to it, by the time it got to the Board, um, a change in the time frame, which isn't that much of a concern. But it also added that the only people who will be sent quotes or the opportunity to make a quote for insurance it, are those recommended by the staff and the board insurance committee. And it seems to me that the entire board should have that opportunity and it shouldn't be limited just to the staff and the board insurance committee. I don't understand why a motion that was made in committee is not the motion that is on your agenda for tonight. Uh, my second concern also about the same item is using an RFQ rather than an RFP. We have always used RFPs for insurance. You gather a great deal more information, and it is far more objective in the data. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Montz. Any other public comment on any item not pulled? Okay, we'll now go to board comment which, Mr. DeZormo, that allows you to go ahead and speak on uh, item 3.3 and read it. All right, 3.3, uh, Lafayette, Lafayette Parish School Board, Lafayette, Louisiana, resolution 04-024-2090 to recognize National Week of Young Child on April 6th through April 12th, 2024, where is the first years of a child's life are the period of the most rapid brain development and lay the foundation for all future learning. Whereas two of the three Louisiana families have both parents working. And whereas high quality early care and education can help lessen the effects of poverty, detect and re remediate delays, identify and help prevent child neglect, and lead to positive outcomes for individual children, helping them to be prepared for school and more likely to succeed in life. Whereas high quality early Childhood education depends on a high quality early childhood educators who deserve, who ensure that the children supported by their families have the experience they need for a strong foundation. Whereas young children need skill, educated, competent, consistent, and compensated early childhood educators and developmentally appropriate, accessible, and available early care on education settings. Whereas working families need sufficient high quality child care spaces be beginning at the birth to be available in the community. Whereas early childhood educators need opportunities to acquire critical skills, knowledge, and competencies while receiving basic workplace benefits. Whereas the celebration of Week of the Young Child highlights the vital role quality early care and education plays in the lives of young children and families in the state of Louisiana. Whereas be duly resolved that the Louisiana Parish School Board does hereby designate the week April 6th through April 12th, 2024 as 
National Week of Young Child and does hereby recognize that when our society invests in educators, we also invest in children and families. Thank you. Ms. Mason? I'd like to read um, the resolution 3.3. .3. Education Savings Accounts ESA's resolution 04-024-2091. A resolution expressing opposition to state legislations establishing education savings accounts, ESAs, including House Bill 745, which creates the LA Gator Scholarship Program that provides public dollars for private school tuition and educational expenses, and to urge the Lafayette Parish legislative delegation to vote no on any bill proposing an education savings account and otherwise to provide with respect thereto. Whereas there is a renewed and concerted effort at the legislature to pass bills that will give public funds directly to parents to be used for private school tuition and other educational expenses with little to no oversight. And whereas for the past 20 years, the state has failed to adequately fund K through 12 public education. And whereas during that same period, the state has continuously placed new accountability demands on both our students and our schools. And whereas the Lafayette Parish School Board provides free public K through 12 education to any student who resides in our school district within the guideline, guidelines set by both the state and federal government. And whereas, Diverting public dollars to private schools and other programs through education savings accounts, ESAs, without fully funding public schools disadvantages our students and schools. And whereas providing public dollars to ESAs without requiring the same state accountability testing imposed on public school students is irresponsible public policy. Therefore, the Lafayette Parish School Board does hereby express its opposition to legislation creating and or funding education savings accounts. Further, the Lafayette School Board, Lafayette Parish School Board directs the superintendent of the Lafayette Parish School System to deliver a certified copy of this resolution to each member of the legislative delegation of Lafayette Parish. Thank you, Ms. Mason. Do we have any other board comment on any items not pulled? Ms. LeBou? Um, I just wanted to, to comment on this. Um, the ESAs will also fund homeschool if they use an approved curriculum, but again, not the same accountability requirements as the public school. So just wanted to let everybody know that it's not just private schools, but people can say they're educating their child at home and not have to be accountable on the same level as um, or prove on the same level that we they were actually educating them and achieving you know and in, in keeping up with the um, respective uh, priorities that we have in, in educating the kids every year and, and you know performance level so just want to make everybody aware of that as well thank you ma'am any other comments madam secretary will call for the vote Motion carries. I was confused. Motion carries. We'll now move to items that were pulled. 3.1. Ms. Trahan will attend, entertain a motion. Thank you, Mr. President. I'd like to read the resolution. If you could go ahead and read the recommended action, we'll get a, a, a motion and a, a, a second, please. Yes. 
that the board adopt resolution 04-024-2089 recognizing national autism awareness month as attached in the public content section of the agenda item second. we have a motion by Ms. trahan a second by mr edmund is there any public comment concerning this item hearing none the floor is yours mr trahan thank you National Autism Awareness Month, Resolution 04-024-2089. Whereas the Lafayette Parish School Board is a center for diverse learning where all students are educated to their fullest potential and as a center of our community around which we come together in support of the education of all students. And whereas autism spectrum disorder is a developmental disorder typically diagnosed during the first three years of life impacting the ability of individuals to communicate and interact with others. And whereas it's reported to occur in all racial, ethnic, and socioeconomic groups, but it's more than four times more common among boys than among girls. And whereas early diagnosis and intervention programs employs qualified and caring individuals who educate and work daily to improve the lives of students with an autism spectrum disorder and whereas April 2024 is designated as National Autism Awareness Month to increase public awareness of the need to support individuals with autism spectrum disorders and the family members, educators, and other professionals who teach and care for individuals with autism spectrum disorder. Therefore, be it resolved that the Lafayette Parish School Board do hereby celebrate National Autism Awareness Month from April 1st through the 30th, 2024, recognizes and commends the family members of children with autism spectrum disorder for their dedication in providing for the special needs of children with autism spectrum disorder, emphasizes the need to begin early intervention services for children diagnosed with autism spectrum disorder in an effort to improve potential outcomes for people with autism spectrum disorder. It honors the teacher, paraprofessionals, and other educators who possess the desire, caring, and skills necessary to teach, assist, and respond to students with special needs, including those with autism spectrum disorder, and who work tirelessly to educate and provide high quality services for all students with special needs enrolled in the Lafayette Parish School District. Thank you, Ms. Tran. Is there any board comment on this resolution? Hearing none, Madam Secretary, I'll call for the vote. Eight for, none against. Motion carries. Next item pulled was 3.13 discussion and our action to use contingency and are committed for roofing project funds for improvements to facilities. Mr. Lejeune. Thank you, Mr. Lejeune. Uh, that the board approve the use of contingency funds and or committed for roofing funds within the capital improvement fund and self-funded construction fund for improvements to facilities as listed below in the public content section. We have a motion. Do I have a second? I second. Okay, we have a motion by Mr. Lejeune, second by Mr. Desarmo. Is there any public comment concerning this item? Our staff comment. Mr. Gotro. Thank you, sir. Uh, so I asked Mr. Lejeune to pull this item uh, rather than just letting it pass and consent, just to give an explanation of what's going on in the construction department here. So when I was brought in uh, in December, um, Mr. Tushet uh, tax, tasked me with things and gave me some uh, freedom to do some things in this department that haven't been done before. So we came into a list of uh, probably close to 200 construction projects that needed to be taken care of, and each project had a budget. Uh, I came in and as a teacher, um, as a business owner, as a public uh, elected official, not in this district, uh, with a mindset of I want to get the most that we can for our taxpayer dollars. So I came in with that mindset and the grace of the people above me to pursue that. So what I've done in the four months I've been here is taken that list of projects and uh, gotten a lot 
gotten quite a bit done. Uh, we condensed it down. We've closed out about 80 projects since I've been here. We've added in an additional 60 capital projects since I've been here, which were funded, closed out many of those. And in the end of doing all of that, looking back at the money, from the way processes were done before to the way I'm doing it now, we saved about $2 million. So that's money we put back into our account. So what I'm coming here now is just to ask for some of that money back to pursue more projects. So it means that my crew wants to work so bad, we're coming back to ask for the money we save to do more work. We see the benefit of what it does for the kids. We were teachers. Again, like I'm going to say, me and my two guys directly under me were all teachers. We know what kids need. So we just wanted to come in and clarify what this is. This is money that we weren't expecting to have, but we have it because of the processes we put in. We just want some of that money back to go into these schools and do upgrades and repairs and do things. And if you look at that list of schools, you see the ones that are up here. These are not our new schools. These are the ones that need it. These are the ones that probably hadn't seen a lot of love in the years. So we want to give them some love. Just give us a little bit of money back. We're going to go get some good things done. We're going to save some more money. Um, and we're going to take some of that and go back and do as much as we can in schools. And again, with the number one thing I said there, taking care of kids, but saving taxpayers money. We need to build trust amongst our taxpayers. So we want them to see that we're hiring the best people at good prices, local people. We brought in some vendors that really weren't here before, and we're getting a lot done. So with that, I just ask for approval on this. Any questions? Okay, thank you. Any board member comment? Yes, sir, Mr. Latchley. Uh, I've been an educator in this parish for a long time and worked in the system for a long time and in the past projects moved very slow. If you drive around Lafayette now and look at the schools, projects are going really quickly. Uh, Mr. Gotro and his crew is doing an outstanding job. So whatever he needs to, to continue to do that, I feel that we need to take care of it. Thank you. Mr. DeZarmo? I just want to say that I work closely with Mr. Gotro. Uh, Karen Crow is one of those areas that needed love uh, so we we did spend a lot of time and effort and anytime I call you answer on the first ring you're always there helping us out I'm all for backing anything you need especially since it's money you save just like you said you've talked about this before if you could save money you could do more projects that's kind of been a goal so it's pretty cool to see that coming to light now after after a few months so thank you Miss Labou I just want to urge my board members to vote for this. Um, thank you for the attention to Drexel um, Elementary. It could use some, definitely some love. And I did want to point out Mr. Gotro, in addition to being a 30 year board member, or I mean, sorry, 30 year um, teacher, he did mention that he's also elected official. He is a school board member in another parish. So I know that he, when he does a project and he looks at budget, he's doing it with the best from the, the side of an educator, but also from the side of, a, a, of making sure that we're fiscally responsible. So I appreciate your service there and um, all the things that you're doing around here. Any more board comment? Before we go to vote, Mr. Lejeune, would projects moving slowly have been one of the reasons Acadiana was high was called the Wild Wild West? Absolutely. We took care of it on our own. We took care of things. Thank you, sir. <laughs> Madam Secretary, I'll call for the vote. I don't think my fellow board members knew how much fun it was to be a board member and have Mr. Lejeune as the principal of your high school. That was fun. Eight for, none against. Motion carries. That will complete the consent agenda part. We have litigation. I would entertain a motion that we go into special session concerning 4.1, 4.2, and 4.3. I'll move we go into executive session. Second. Second. Okay, we have a, a motion by Mr. Hidalgo, a second by Ms. Mason that 4.1 is discussion and our action concerning prospective litigation. 4.2 is discussion and our action concerning prospective litigation. And 4.3 is discussion and our action concerning prospective litigation. I'm going to call for a voice vote. All those in favor say aye. aye. All those opposed? We will now go into special session.
come back into regular session. I'd like to make a motion that we come back into regular session. Second. Got a motion by Ms. Mason, second by Mr. Hidalgo that we come back into regular session. We'll go by voice vote. All those in favor say aye. Aye. All those opposed? Motion carries. We are now back in regular session. Mr. President, I'd like to make a motion that um, the board accept uh, legals, uh, the attorney's opinions, uh, the attorney's recommendations on item 4.1, 4.2, and 4.3. I second. We have, a, we have a motion by Mr. Hidalgo. Second by Mr. DeZormo. Yes. Any public comment? Any board member comment? Madam Secretary, I'll call for the vote. Chad DeZormo. We can, we can do a voice vote. All those in favor say aye. aye. All those opposed? Motion carries. That will conclude our meeting for this evening. This meeting is adjourned. I like it.